Today we are going to talk about encryption. Encryption is the process of translating plain text, that's your regular data in human readable format, into ciphertext, something that appears meaningless and random, but using a certain algorithm can be converted back to the original or deciphered. In this video I am going to show you step by step, in very simple terms, how data can be ciphered and deciphered. This is Ron Latino. To understand how encryption works, first we have to look at how computers store data. Back in school, my friend and I had a coding system that we used to pass secret messages. Every character had a numeric code, so if we needed to encode, say, the word computer, in my buddy's code it would be 3, 15, 13, 16, 21, 20, 5, and 18. You've probably guessed what this coding system was based on. Characters position in alphabet. Computers use a very similar system. Only letters A code is 65. The reason is because the coding system also contains digits and special characters that go before letters. In programming it's called the ASCII table and it's been around for almost 60 years. Note that the space character also has a unique code. It's 32. So, here's how the word computer would look like ASCII encoded. Although this already looks pretty much encrypted to most people, in fact it is not. Anyone can use the standard ASCII code table to perform a reverse conversion. So, what do we do to actually obfuscate our data in case someone intercepts it? Probably we need to use some mathematical formula to transform our numbers to some other numbers. The formula must be reversible, so that the conversion could also be performed on the receiving end to access the data. Before we proceed to actual encryption, we need to, please bear with me, perform yet another conversion. This time we will go binary. You probably know that computers do not work with decimal numbers, so the binary representation of our eight numerals will look like this. There isn't any secret in decimal to binary conversion. It's basically another way to store numbers. We can pop up Windows Calculator and do the work. Make sure you switch to Programmer's mode and click DEC, which means your entry mode is decimal. 67 becomes 0100011 and 79 becomes 01001111 and so on. Please note, we do not apply any transformation to our data yet. We are just writing down the word computer in ASCII code in binary. So, every character is now encoded by 8 bits. An 8-bit number is called byte in programming, so one character takes up exactly one byte in computer memory. Ok, but this is still not encrypted, because anyone who knows how to convert binary to decimal, which is at least one person in 300, that's the percentage of programmers among us, can still read it. So let's do our job. We are now going to use the simplest cipher algorithm in existence called XOR or exclusive OR. XOR is a basic logical operator performed on two binary digits and it goes like this. If both digits are zero, the result is zero. That's obvious. If the digits are zero and one or one and zero doesn't matter, the result is one. Sounds like your old school addition, doesn't it? However, if both digits are ones, the result is not one, but zero. That's actually the reason why it's called 
exclusive or. Let's go over that once again. If the first digit or the second digit is 1, the result is 1. That's why the operation is called OR. But if both are 1s, the result is 0. That's exclusive OR. Now, to actually cipher our text, we need to come up with a secret number that we are going to share with the person who is going to receive the message, so they can use it to decipher it on their end. In cryptography, this number is called shared secret key. It can be fully random, but it must be at least 8 bits long, because our characters are 8 bit numbers, and XOR operation must be carried out bit by bit. I suggest we use 90 as a key. Doesn't look like a very beautiful number, but it looks much cooler in binary 0101 1010. Zero, one, zero. Now let us XOR. The source byte for character C is 01000011. Zero, one, zero, 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 one, one. The key is 0101 1010. Zero, one, zero, one, zero. Now, 0 XOR0 zero is 0. 1 XOR1 one is also 0, remember? 0 XOR0 zero is 0. 0 XOR1 one is 1. 0 XOR1 one is 1. 0 XOR0 zero is 0. 1 XOR1 one is 0. And finally, 1 XOR0 zero is 1. So, our result for the first byte is 00011001. Now we do the same to the rest of the character codes. If you look carefully, you can see that XORing is basically inverting the original digit, that is, flipping from 0 to 1 or vice versa, if the corresponding digit of the secret key is 1. If it's 0, we just leave the original bit as it is. OK, this is how the word computer looks in binary after XORing with byte 90. Let's see what happens if someone intercepts this message and tries to decode it. Convert back to decimal. Convert back to plain text. Aha! Uh -huh. They failed miserably, because they do not have our secret key. Looks like our simplistic encryption is working. Now let's do the reverse conversion. We just basically run these numbers through exactly the same routine. Like I said, XOR is reversible, so the same secret key can be used on both sending and receiving ends. Now let us convert the ASCII codes to characters. Here we go. Like I said, XOR is the simplest encryption algorithm. The actual encryption schemes used today are much more complex and hack-proof. And we will definitely look into them in the upcoming videos. I really hope you find this video useful. If you do, please do not hesitate to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. I'd also appreciate it if you supported me by writing a comment below and shared this video on social media. This was Ron Matino. I'll see you later.